Welcome back to History of Simple Things. Today's topic comes from one of our viewers, Michael Drury, 5824. Thanks for the suggestion. You asked, does aluminum foil transfer to food and is it safe to use in cooking? Aluminum foil is a staple in almost every kitchen. But have you ever wondered if it's doing more than just keeping your leftovers fresh? Some say it's perfectly safe, while others warn about potential health risks. So what's the real deal? Stick around as we dig into the science behind aluminum foil right here on History of Simple Things. Does aluminum transfer to food? The short answer is yes, but the real question is, how much? Aluminum is a reactive metal, meaning that under certain conditions, small amounts can leach into food. But it's not as simple as saying, if you wrap food in foil, you're eating aluminum. Several factors affect how much aluminum transfers, including temperature, acidity, and cooking time. Studies have shown that cooking with aluminum foil at high temperatures, especially with acidic foods like tomatoes, citrus, or vinegar-based marinades, can increase the amount of aluminum that ends up in your food. Heat causes the aluminum to break down slightly, and when it comes into contact with acidic ingredients, it accelerates this process. So, if you're baking a lemon-marinated salmon in foil or wrapping tomato sauce in aluminum, you might be getting more aluminum than you realize. How much aluminum are we talking about? Now, before you start tossing out all your aluminum foil, let's put this into perspective. The amount of aluminum that transfers into food varies widely, but even in the most extreme cases, it's usually measured in milligrams. The World Health Organization, WHO, considers aluminum intake of up to 40 milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day to be safe. Most people consume far less than that, even if they use aluminum cookware or foil regularly. The human body also has a way of handling small amounts of aluminum. It gets filtered out by the kidneys and excreted in urine. However, for individuals with kidney disease or conditions that impair aluminum clearance, Accumulation can be a concern. Long-term exposure to high levels of aluminum has been linked to neurological issues, though direct evidence connecting aluminum in food to such health risks is still inconclusive. Is cooking with aluminum foil safe? For most people, yes. If you're using aluminum foil occasionally, especially for wrapping foods that aren't highly acidic and aren't exposed to prolonged high heat, the amount of aluminum transfer is likely insignificant. But if you're using it daily to cook high-temperature meals or wrap acidic foods, it might be worth considering alternatives. Studies suggest that chronic exposure to excessive aluminum could be linked to neurodegenerative diseases, such as Alzheimer's, though the research remains inconclusive. While the link isn't definitive, it's enough to make some people think twice about using aluminum foil in their cooking routine. If you're concerned about aluminum exposure, there are plenty of alternatives that can replace foil in many cooking situations. Parchment paper is a great substitute for baking and roasting, as it provides a non-stick surface without the risk of metal transfer. For food storage, reusable silicone wraps or glass containers work just as well. When it comes to grilling, stainless steel grilling baskets or cast iron cookware can provide the same results without aluminum exposure. The key is to find materials that fit your cooking style and don't introduce new health concerns. Aluminum isn't just in foil, it's also in many pots, pans, and baking sheets. Most aluminum cookware today is anodized, meaning it has a protective layer that prevents significant aluminum leaching. 
However, uncoated aluminum cookware can behave similarly to foil when exposed to acidic foods and high heat. If you're concerned about long-term aluminum exposure, switching to stainless steel, cast iron, or ceramic cookware can be a safer bet. These materials don't react with food the way aluminum does, and they can last for decades if properly maintained. Should you stop using aluminum foil? For most people, there's no urgent reason to eliminate aluminum foil completely. If you use it occasionally and avoid cooking acidic foods in it, the risk is minimal. However, if you frequently cook with foil at high temperatures or wrap acidic ingredients in it, it might be a good idea to limit your exposure. Like many things in nutrition and health, moderation is key. Instead of banning aluminum foil from your kitchen, consider using it strategically. Maybe for storing food rather than cooking it, or lining a baking sheet, but not wrapping food directly in it. Small changes can significantly reduce aluminum exposure without making life in the kitchen more difficult. Aluminum foil is incredibly convenient, and for most people, the risks associated with using it in cooking are relatively low. However, aluminum does transfer to food under certain conditions, such as exposure to high heat or acidic ingredients. While the amount that leaches is generally considered safe, those who are particularly health conscious or have conditions affecting aluminum processing might prefer to limit their use. Small adjustments like using parchment paper for baking or switching to glass and stainless steel for food storage can help reduce unnecessary exposure without sacrificing convenience. At the end of the day, aluminum foil remains a useful kitchen tool. But like anything, it's best used in moderation. If you're mindful about how and when you use it, there's little cause for concern. Whether you choose to keep using foil, cut back, or switch to alternatives, the key takeaway is understanding the factors involved and making informed decisions that align with your health priorities and lifestyle. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.